So when it comes to Kevin Durant, LeBron James, and Stephen Curry, when everything is all said and done, you cannot speak on each player's legacy without speaking about the other. For one, when LeBron James had returned to Cleveland in 2014, he was pretty much on his way of just collecting championships, possibly three to four of them. But a young Stephen Curry, along with his teammates Klay Thompson and Draymond Green and Andre Iguodala, along with a little bit of luck, got one over on LeBron James. But in the following season, LeBron James and Kyrie Irving were able to put together a great comeback on the Golden State Warriors, even though Las Vegas had them as the favorites in that series. But after that exact moment, if the script was to continue the way it should have been written, LeBron James, LeBron James was basically going to have won over the Warriors every single season after that. The Warriors at that point were similar to the Seattle Seahawks and the Legion of Boom after Russell Wilson threw that interception in the Super Bowl. After that, that team was pretty much done due to that devastating loss. And it was a similar circumstance with the Golden State Warriors blowing that 3-1 lead, Draymond getting suspended, and Andrew Bogut getting hurt in the finals. But what brought Golden State back to life was Kevin Durant joining them the following season. And thus the script changed. LeBron James, instead of adding more rings to his legacy, his path took a left turn. And unexpectedly, Kevin Durant cemented himself with a couple of rings. But eventually, due to a lot of outside pressure, Durant, of course, left Golden State, went on his own to fully solidify himself, almost taking the same journey LeBron James did when he left Miami and went to Cleveland. He had to get one on his own to fully cement his legacy. But here's where the legacy of Steph Curry comes in. Steph Curry, at the time when KD had departed from the Warriors, He's always left curiosity among NBA viewers, whether it be beat writers, analysts, fans, but we always had this notion in our heads, could Curry do it on his own? We've never fully seen it, and the narrative of him in 2015 winning the finals and not even getting the finals MVP was pretty much the overall narrative hanging over his head, and he needed to jump over that hurdle to cement himself and his legacy. And we could tell at the time it meant a lot to him, because in the 2017 NBA Finals, after being up 3-1, he went to the locker room crying because he understood that he had not performed well enough in that game to solidify himself as a Finals MVP, and KD would basically take it back to back. But here's where things get real interesting. Starting off in the 2020-21 season, Stephen Curry looked revamped. The Warriors were going through injuries, but he was clearly the leader and he began to close that narrative of could he be that guy to lead his team. And then finally, he cemented his legacy not only with a great season in 2021 to 22, but also an NBA championship, undoubtedly leading his team. And he did this with Andrew Wiggins as his second best player at the time as Klay Thompson returned, but he wasn't his old self. But Stephen Curry still elevated himself to a whole nother level that we've never seen before. Not only did he bulk up and revamp his whole physical body, but he also added a few layers to his game. But after that championship, a brand new pressure started happening on Kevin Durant's side. It was proven that Stephen Curry could win a ring without KD. Now the pressure was on for KD to do the same. That's why I said in the beginning of this segment, you cannot tell one player's story without mentioning the other. These three players deeply impact each other's legacies. But Kevin Durant recently was asked, when GOAT conversations are had, how come he's never mentioned? And his reply was quite interesting. Because I went to the Warriors? Durant said, why shouldn't I be in that? That's the question you should ask. Why not? What haven't I done? Now I agree with him in that first part. He should be at least considered. Because in reality, he's not really considered like that. But what hasn't he done? He has not responded to what Stephen Curry did in 2022 by not only leading his team during a regular season, but winning an NBA Finals without him. That's why that championship by Stephen Curry was very important. It solidified his legacy. The same way Kobe Bryant won that championship in 2010 defeating the Boston Celtics, it solidified him. Not all championships are created equal. And you could also say the same thing about LeBron James in 2016 when he returned that championship back to Cleveland. It cemented his legacy. Kevin Durant 
still needs that moment. At first, when he left the Warriors, he didn't really need that moment. But when Stephen Curry led his team to a championship in 2022, the pressure was on. But another layer to this whole Stephen Curry, KD, LeBron saga is the revisionist history some of us had about LeBron James going to Miami. Him and KD kind of did the same thing. Make no mistake about it. D Wade and Chris Bosh were considered top 10 players before LeBron James had went to Miami. And there is no doubt, pound for pound, talent for talent, that having D Wade and Chris Bosh as your teammates along with LeBron James is not even nowhere near close to having Draymond Green and Klay Thompson. That is not even close, especially when you factor in LeBron James, which is pound for pound, still a greater talent than Stephen Curry. But the system that the Warriors play was by far revolutionary. It changed the game. And this is where Stephen Curry's career still impacts LeBron James outside of KD's decision going to the Golden State Warriors. Stephen Curry in LeBron's era, or should I say LeBron's reign as the king of the NBA, his impact on the league is 10 times more than LeBron James. He's actually changed the game, the kind of shots you're allowed to take. You see kids playing the same way Stephen Curry plays, taking three-point shots that before would be considered horrible shots. But now, because of the play Stephen Curry is considered okay, He's really impacted the game in a way that people did not see happening, especially during LeBron James' reign. But going back to LeBron James joining the Heat, which is a very similar situation to what KD joined the Warriors. Let's not forget, the Miami Heat not only had D-Wade and Bosh, they also were able to recruit Ray Allen to that team. And from season to season, with the genius Pat Riley up in the front office, they were able to get three-point shooters to surround LeBron James. Mike Miller, Shane Battier, Rashad Lewis. I mean, Rashad Lewis was an all-star in Seattle by himself. So KD's decision to go to Golden State, it looks different when you begin to put things into proper context. The Golden State Warriors drafted all their guys. Draymond Green was a second round pick that fit well into their system, but he wasn't a guy that was hopping out the gym and just having a bunch of raw talent or being this superstar that puts up crazy numbers. He fit into their system well. He played excellent all-NBA defense. He sort of has like a Dennis Rodman impact on the Chicago Bulls. But this notion of Kevin Durant joining a all-star team is, is slightly overrated. It's slightly overrated, especially when you compare it to LeBron's decision of him joining up with D. Wade and Chris Bosh. And then Haslam, a guy who was a double-double machine at the time, took a complete pay cut in order for these three guys to re-sign with the Heat. So low-key, they had a player that pretty much qualified, I don't want to say for max money, but for a large contract, and he was, he was taking almost a vet minimum. That's why they hung up his jersey in Miami, and he stayed on the team for throughout the years. They basically was paying him back his salary that he took a pay cut on. But once again, when you review things into proper context, when you take a look back at KD's decision of joining the Warriors, I think it's a bit overblown that they were an all-star team. They drafted all their guys. They happened to win 73 games because of the system that they were playing. But with that devastating loss that they had in the finals, Kevin Durant was pretty much a lifeline of them continuing that kind of stretch run that they had during that 73-game win season. That style of play Kevin Durant joining their team basically extended that because from season to season after that, teams were kind of catching up to what the Warriors were doing. Once again, that's why you can't really tell the Stephen Curry story without KD. Two of those rings was because of Kevin Durant. But as soon as KD left, you began to see that system that they ran was starting to crumble. Other teams were beginning to catch up to it. But again, looking at LeBron throughout his career, if we're going to discredit KD for joining the Warriors, then we're going to have to hold LeBron to the same standard for his two Heat championships. The only reason LeBron has a heads up on KD and people don't really hold it over his head that he went to Miami is because he bought a championship to Cleveland. That's where KD has to bounce back. He's going to have to win one on his own. But make no mistake about it, LeBron James throughout his whole career 
has pretty much played with a lot of first ballot Hall of Famers. D. Wade and Chris Bosh already got in first time they were eligible. And if you look at when he joined Cleveland, Kevin Love will fall in the same route. And Kyrie Irving possibly too, depending on how his last few years come about. But no doubt he's making the Hall of Fame for sure. I'm not sure if it's going to be first ballot. But LeBron James throughout his career has played with a lot of Hall of Famers, even on the Lakers. Anthony Davis, Dwight Howard, Rajon Rondo, Russell Westbrook, Marcus Sowell, Carmelo Anthony. I mean, the list goes on and on. <laughs> LeBron James throughout his whole career, man, he's played with a lot of talent. A lot of talent, especially for a player that has only four rings. And just like in Miami, he's had a ton of, I would say, I don't want to say completely role players, but just players who could service him and AD as a duo out there in LA. Yeah, Isaiah Thomas, former point guard of the Celtics, D'Angelo Russell, Pat Bev, Andre Drummond. I mean, they even tried to get Kawhi out in LA the year after the Raptors won the championship in 2019. Remember, the Lakers were in the sweepstakes for that. But had the Lakers got Kawhi, you have to ask yourself, in the GOAT conversations, will we have the same energy for LeBron as we would for KD? And more than likely, the answer would be no, because once again, KD has to do it out on his own. The pressure is on. He can't really rely on saying, oh, I won a championship in Golden State. They've never done it without me. Because after 2022, that no longer has been the case. So when you take a step back and put things into proper context, these players' legacies are more intertwined and the situation is kind of a bit more layered than what it appears to be. But make no mistake about it, Kevin Durant has the most pressure to bring home an NBA title without Stephen Curry.